So what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is the cosine of negative 8 pi over 3. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, when applying doing a problem like this, all right, um, what we can do is, again, you can determine where this point is, right? Just like we did before, if I had cosine of an angle, you got to be able to determine where that angle is. So what we can go and do for that is, again, as I mentioned before, when we're trying to determine where the angle is, um, first thing we do is we always start with our initial side, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate rays about our vertex, which is um, at the origin. And remember, when we go in this direction, it's positive. This direction, it's negative. So therefore, I need to go in clockwise direction. All right, and then remember, what we talked about was when we looked at a circle, all right, this is what we called the radius. And if we took that radius and wrapped it around the circle, we were able to do it about three times. But there's that little, little, little part right here that we were missing. And that part in decimal form is 0.14159 dot, 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 right? Which is goes on and on and on forever. And we, con con um, we concluded that is the measure of pi, all right? Our symbol for pi that represents how many times you can wrap the radius around to get half a circle, which is pi, all right? So therefore, um, if here's pi, but now what they say is pi thirds. So ladies and gentlemen, if I have 3 thirds of something, that is equal to pi, right? Because 3 divided by 3 divides 2. 3 divided by 3 divides 2, 1, right? So that's the same thing. So if you guys are looking at this in thirds, well, then if I break this up, 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, right? But guys, this goes into 8 thirds. So therefore, we can break this up into thirds. So this goes 1 thirds, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds, um, 6 thirds, 7 thirds, 8 thirds, right? So you guys see how I wrapped around the circle, wrapped around the circle, wrapped around the circle? Um, so now, if we're going to go and take a look at this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's fine if it's negative 8 thirds. But what if I gave you negative 80 thirds? You're going to be wrapping around the circle a lot, right? So what this is going to go into is what we call, what we talked about is our coterminal angles. All right? If we can be able to determine when our angle, what our smallest positive and smallest negative angles, that's going to save us a lot of time of always trying to graph this. So remember, when we talked about coterminal angles, for it to be a coterminal angle, it has to have the same initial and same terminal side. Now, we did that by adding and subtracting 2 pi, because 2 pi is one revolution around the circle. So let's take the point negative 8 pi over 3. If I add 2 pi to that, right? If I add 2 pi to that, that's pretty much like me taking away one revolution. Then I'm only left with this angle, right? Did everybody say that? Yes? So what would subtracting 2 pi look like, or adding 2 pi? Well, remember, if 2 pi in terms of thirds is going to be the same thing as 6 pi over 3, right? So if I add 6 pi over 3, therefore I have negative 2 pi over 3 which is this angle. Now, some of you still might have a problem with this and saying, I still don't understand where that angle is or what the point is. So guys, you can always, if you wanted to find, if you wanted to find just the smallest positive one, you have 4 pi over 3, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Do you guys see how what we're doing by adding and subtracting 2 pi, rather than doing all these extra revolution, 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 you're just adding and subtracting 2 pi, find your coterminal angles, just to say, oh, 4 thirds. Oh, I get that. That's right there. right? But now here comes the hard part. Now we need to remember, where is that point? So to do that, we need to go back to our unit circle. Now, on the lovely video that I made, uh, uh, why don't you guys go and take a look at, we talked about how to know the major points on our unit circle. Okay. So the points, the major points on a unit circle are 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1. This first point, which is at 30 degrees, which is equivalent to pi over 6 radians, is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So when you have an angle that intersects 
um, when you have an angle that intersects the, the unit circle at 30 degrees or pi over 6, that's going to be your um, angle, or that's going to be your coordinate point. Then we have the next angle, which is 45 degrees, which is equivalent to pi force. That's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. All right. And then we have our third one, which is 60 degrees, which is equal to pi thirds. And that point is going to be 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. All right. So when we're looking at our unit circle, what we're looking at, Kevin, is so if this is pi thirds, right? This is pi thirds. And what we're trying to do is, well, if this is pi thirds here, you guys can see that these two lines are reflections of each other, right? Do you guys see how this line for pi thirds is a reflection of that line, which is where our terminal side is? So therefore, how do they reflect from the first quadrant to the third quadrant? What that's going to be now is each one of these points is now going to be a negative negative 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, So as long as you guys can remember what the first quadrant, the points are on the first quadrant, and then you can just go ahead and reflect them, then you're going to be, then you're going to have an understanding of it. All right? So you have negative 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. Then it's just asking us, what is the cosine? Well, remember, cosine of an angle of theta equals x. So the x coordinate of my point is negative 1 half. Done. OK. Questions, preguntas? No? Good.